Hey, Captain Doug here, Phuket, Thailand. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> hey, I, uh, I've had a project the last couple months. I took a, uh, a powered paraglider that's foot launched uh, that I found here in Thailand used and um, have modified that. Uh, I built, a, it's kind of in two phases. I built a steel cage around the back for the propeller instead of the uh, fiberglass and, and um, fairly flimsy cage that came with it. And uh, I built that out of uh, a half inch EMT, which is conduit tubing. Uh, Breeze that together. That's the first part of the video. And then after I was done with that, um, I made a uh, set of landing gear for it, under carriage, if you will, and uh, made the two together. So the, the power plant, the, the motor and frame from the power paragliding, and then made it to the, to the wheels, so it'll, and it's designed so it'll all come apart so you can put it in the car. Fits into my CRV. So um, uh, just putting the finishes touches on that video for YouTube, and I'll upload that today, later on. and. Um, Remember to subscribe, like, comment if you will. It's a little departure from my travel videos that I've had, but um, after having made another road trip um, to uh, one of the mountains here to paraglide and being blown out with weather, um, I decided to go ahead and do this power. I, I got training in power paragliding in, um, in Florida. Oh, in 1999, I think and um, did a little bit of it since then. So I've had the training for it and actually had a unit back in Florida that I flew a few times. So anyway, hope you enjoy it. Um, again, subscribe, like, share it with your friends if uh, they might have an interest. You have a good day. So today's the day to uh, try to start this motor for the first time. I bought this uh, used pair of motor. Has less than one hour on it. The guy had a incident Got spooked, that was five years ago. Anyway, I'm gonna, it's got this flexible cage with fiberglass rods and uh, it had been damaged. I got it fixed, but I'm checking clearances. So that's at two and a half inches from the prop on that lower rod. And basically the same, a little, a little more, almost three inches here on the upper one. And the props, uh, an inch and a half longer than what the book says it should be. I don't know if he, if he ate a prop in the, in the process of his accident. Now here's, here's three, three and three quarters on this tip of the prop on the right hand side lower. And three and a quarter or so on the upper on this side. So. There's a little discrepancy there anyway. These are, uh, one of these has got a, a bend in it. Uh, I don't know if we just strip that out. I think I may have. It had a problem. Oh, no, or the rivet's gone. The rivet just came out. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> I'm gonna um, design a, a rigid cage because I'm gonna put wheels on it, make a track out of it. And uh, these just flex too much when you do a forward launch on a trike. The uh, lines from the glider pull the cage in and numerous stories of people shredding props and shredding line stations. Okay, we'll see how today's can get her started and running today. We just got her started. She purrs like a kitten. Uh, idle is set about right. Uh, it continues to run. It's a little smoky because it's uh, more oil for break-in than you'd normally have. It's like three and a half percent oil as opposed to three percent. Um, had to take the fuel filter 
uh, hose off the top and um, prime it a little bit, fill that filter up with some fuel. It's got a lot of compression. Of course, it's only got about an hour running time on it, apparently. So it's a pretty tight little motor. And uh, you have to give it a pretty good tug to turn it over. Uh, it's got a clutch, mechanical clutch, and gear reduction there. So at idle, the prop's not spinning much at all. Anyway, we're going to go through the brake-in procedure. I ran it for two minutes at kind of a moderate RPM, so I didn't you know, gun in it or anything. And then I think I go for five next time. So we're bending up this uh, quarter inch uh, EMT conduit tubing for the cage on my paramotor. I just wanted to, so this is the, the bender for a 45 EMT. This is EMT, somewhere it says a quarter. And um, trial and error, see the arrow pointing to my mark, I'm not right on, I just set that for the photograph. See the red mark there, lines up with the arrow. And then the other guide you want, I, I drew a line down the down the EMT, uh, trying to make that a straight line, and then I placed it just above that bend marker. And so if you'll line that up each time before you make your small bend to get your curve, um, that'll help you get a more consistent um, curve and that you don't get a twist in the pipe. Okay, so here's the design layout for my uh, nose wheel. On a, I'm converting my powered paraglider to a trike, powered paragliding trike. So one of the things with wheels on aircraft is you uh, you want the nose wheel to be able to self steer to some degree, um, <clears throat> so it'll it'll tend to correct in the direction of, in this case, the wing. If the wing's falling off to the right. You want the, the uh, paraglider paramotor to have a tendency to correct that and go to the right as opposed to swing you the wrong way. So it's a stability issue kind of on landing and takeoffs, but landing is more of an issue. So um, this is my mock-up. That styrofoam wheel there represents uh, about a nine inch wheel entire combination and then I've got my wood struts here <clears throat> which will be made out of aluminum or steel and then the PVC pipe represents the, uh, the axle, the pivoting axle. So I've laid it out on the tile on my floor. So the uh, flat spot on the styrofoam represents the level ground. <coughs> and then uh, you can see I've got a 90 degree on my PVC pipe. So again, the term is castering, and uh, so the, it has a tendency, it's like your uh, your trolley carts in a, in a grocery store, you know, those wheels, those front wheels caster and steer, but just keep putting some effort in. So it's the same dynamic. If the wheels forward of that axis is raked forward, then it has the opposite tendency, uh, because it's not, this, this wheel tends to follow, right? It follows the axle. It's behind it, whereas the other one's in front. It doesn't have this self-correcting feature. Okay, we'll see how this goes.
Is that the square one that we got from that um, junk shop? Oh, it's very beautiful. Change the color of the um, the part of the bicycle. The first taxi test went well. Um, nothing fell off, nothing broke, as you can see. It's not the most comfortable seating, but again, you only have to set that way during takeoff and landing. You can let your feet drop like they would if you're paraglide, free gliding. So, uh, we'll go out and taxi test some more. Like I say, I haven't, uh, Done the weight and balance, swung it yet, and I have to figure out my uh, line guides, uh, what design I want to have. Some people have used PVC, some have used Velcro, or I'm sorry, uh, wire, wire ties, and some have got metal ones. You don't want the lines to get hung up and stuck.
Go again. So Dolly's out taxi testing her first time. Getting used to the throttle. She ought to have shoes on. She only brought flip flops. Uh, that steering set up more for me than her. So she's having to stretch. I think she's having fun. That's a 120cc motor. It was uh, that's what, Nimbus, I think was the brand name, out of Austria. It's a foot launch unit uh, I bought from a guy over here that had had a crash on his first flight. I built the double ring steel cage out of EMT metal tubing for conduit. Kept it really light, it brazed real well, it's real strong. You know, got it with quick pins and Velcro to stay in place. You need, you need the double uh, tubing, double row for uh, trikes because the uh, netting pinches in when the lines when you go to inflate. Uh, and then the wheels and so forth, we'll hope it's strong enough. It slides so it'll come apart. Kill it. How was that? Is that fun? Is that a nice, nice way to commute to work? What do you want? Your hat?